Welcome back. And now away from the U.S. to Canada states, shortly after the Attorney General of the Federation withdrew charges against the minors arrested over the end bad governance protest. They were handed over to the government of Canada states. And now joining us on the news tonight is the Special Advisor, National International uh, and Public Relations to the Governor of Canada State on Media, Mohamed Yusuf. Thanks for joining us on the news at 10. Thank you so much, and uh, good evening to you and uh, to our viewers. Good evening. Now tell us, what was the immediate reaction of your governor when he heard of the arraignments of these minors? Well, I was with the governor when the information reached him about the arraignment of the minors, and uh, when we saw the videos, and uh, it was a despicable sight. The governor was in total shock, and he was in hell. Uh, no leader would be happy seeing minors being pirated uh, for whatever crime, because uh, the minors, they have their own right, and uh, there are special courts, the juvenile courts, where you can arrange the minors. So the governor was totally unhappy seeing those minors being arraigned. Steps did he take to ensure their release? Well, the governor actually uh, did everything uh, humanly possible immediately. He started working the uh, phones and uh, working around the corners. But uh, we must equally at the same time give kudos and credit to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as well as Ahmed Tinibu, who equally as a leader, when the matter came to his notice, he did everything humanly possible. He showed compassion and uh, he directed that all steps should be taken to ensure that they have been released. So I can tell you that this is something which the state and the federal government collaborated. And at the end of the day, we have the kids back at home now in Kano State. And now that they have been released and handed over to the states, what is the mood in the government house and in Kano states? Well, uh, people are happy, of course, you know, they have families, uh, they are very young, they have families, they have their siblings, and uh, these kids have been taken away for quite some time. And uh, when we got to the kids, we noticed a lot of them. They have rashes all over them, and uh, several health, health factors uh, were affecting them. So the first action, the governor flew them back to Kano yesterday, and they were taken straight to a medical facility whereby they will undergo medical checkups and uh, possible treatments before they are being integrated and reunited with their family but it was more like a mood of fanfare and happiness to their family and to the people of Kanu. Not even the people of Kanu, even at the airport yesterday, we saw a lot of people from different parts of the country coming over to thank the governor and to thank the government for stepping forward to ensure the release of those uh, young uh, boys. Uh, you know, the kids are for everybody, so any human being that has compassion and sees that despicable and deplorable happening at that particular time. Nobody, I'm sure, is happy. So I think everybody is now happy that they have been released and it is a lesson for us for the future. That's an interesting thing to hear. Uh, a senior advocate of Nigeria, yeah. Femi Falano, is insisting that the government must compensate them. Are you thinking along that line too? Well, issue of compensation, that's another thing where Femi Falana and a host of other Nigerians are thinking. But for us as a state, the governor is more concerned on the issue of the education of those young boys. Because now that they are under the medical scrutiny at the state and are undergoing treatment, uh, the governor is more concerned for an assessment of where they stand educationally and uh, if they are in schools. The governor wants to ensure that they go back to school and those that are out of school the governor is trying to see that they have been enrolled in proper uh, educational facility 
so that they can be trained and educated. This is one bitter lesson for them. And the state government is trying every humanly possible thing to ensure that they become better uh, people in the society. Uh, they have had this experience and let the experience be something that they will take on and the future as they begin their own journey into leadership because they are the future of Nigeria and the government is trying everything possible to try and see that they are being trained, especially from the as perspective of, from the angle of educational uh, attainment for them. So that's where our focus is now more on their education and uh, every human being in Nigeria has the right to think of the possible way that uh, the sufferings they suffered over those months can be accommodated for. So Femi Falana is right. I support him for that line of thinking. But the most important thing at this particular juncture is for us to be humble in our thinking and just look forward on how those kids can be trained into becoming the future leaders of this country and giving them hope so that they believe in Nigeria because uh, definitely what has happened to them, they could have lost hope. They could have lost hope definitely in what Nigeria stands for, but now we are trying to integrate them into the system and give them that belief that their country is a country that is a caring nation and a nation that will give them all that they require that will propel them into the next generation of leadership for the country. Interesting. I'm also curious to know what steps you are putting in place to ensure that no one takes advantage of them and others like them in the future. Well, uh, you see, uh, as a state government, uh, this is one data lesson that we have learned. And in the future, we are going to do everything humanly possible. Look, government is about development. And uh, uh, even this uh, protest, hunger protest, whatever protest, all comes about from the sufferings that people are going through within the land. So now it is a clarion call for leaders at all level, at the local government level now that they have autonomy, at the state government's level, and even at the federal government level. It's a time for all governments at all levels to have synergy and come together and work for Nigerians. Let us work and ensure that in the future we do not allow Nigerians to be left with no option but going on protest, protest for hunger, or protest for whatever. It is high time that Nigeria would turn the tide around and do what is needful by providing all the basic necessities and amenities needed by Nigerian people so that they can live a comfortable life. You know, Nigerians are not people that want so much. All they want is very little. If they can have food on their table, there can be light and there can be water. Nigerians don't bother whoever is in government. It's not their concern. They go about living their daily lives. So it's a clarion call for everybody to come together. This is one bitter lesson for the nation that is supposed to rally us all together and we work for Nigerians and ensure that Nigerians do not protest again in the future because it was the outcome of the protest that led us to where we are today and even having kids being those that have been arrested for these issues of protest. While uh, it is a sad thing that has happened, but I think it is a wake up call for all of us to be able to right the wrongs in the country and give people that hope, not only hope, but give them the comfort that Nigerians deserve so that no protest can happen again in the future. Interesting. Thank you so much, Mohamed Yusuf, uh, Special Advisor, National International and Public Relations to the Governor of Kano State. Thank you so much for your, your comments on the uh, topic right now. Thank you so much.